at this point we are going to spend a little bit of time talking about the geometry of these molecules and what I mean by geometry is what these molecules actually look like in three dimensions because uh, what they look like in three dimensions and how they behave in three dimensions um, it, it is a little bit important for what we're going to talk about in the next section so uh, simple molecules so here that this uh, blue atom in the center is supposed to be carbon and the red ones are supposed to be hydrogens um, th this is a toy model of methane if you want to think about it that way and as I mentioned in the in the previous unit um, these these things aren't flat you draw them on a piece of paper and they look flat but in real life they have a very specific three-dimensional shape in the case of uh, something that has a carbon and then four atoms attached to that carbon usually uh, the shape is what's called a tetrahedral shape and that's just a, a formal term for the fact that this thing is shaped like a pyramid so tetrahedral basically just means shaped like a pyramid and each of the four atoms that is attached to the carbon in the center each of those four atoms is basically a corner in the pyramid if you start to attach uh, carbon atoms to each other to make larger molecules like is shown here so here's a picture that I I just took and now these black uh, these black atoms that I'm circling on the left and on the right are supposed to be carbon atoms and then there are other uh, atoms attached to those but the carbon atoms themselves are attached to each other by a single bond and that single bond is this little wooden stick that I'm highlighting here so um, when you have when you start attaching carbon atoms like this by single bonds you're basically attaching pyramids to each other you can think of it that way and because of that um, no matter how you point this thing some of the atoms are going to be pointing toward you in three dimensions so this atom here is pointing toward us this atom over here is pointing toward us and these green ones in this case are supposed to be chlorine and now the white ones are supposed to be hydrogen but the idea is that the these things have a uh, they have three-dimensional shape the other thing to point out and this is just a, a flattened cartoon representation of the molecule here on the left so this thing that I'm circling off to the right is supposed to be the same thing as this but the picture on the left shows you that it has a uh, three-dimensional shape the other thing that I want to point out to you other than the fact that this thing is bulky and takes up uh, space in three dimensions is that the carbon carbon single bond here this single bond here or this single bond shown by the wooden stick is rotatable what that means is the atoms that are attached to this carbon can rotate with respect to the atoms that are attached to the other carbon in other words these three atoms white white and green can rotate with respect to the the three atoms on the left and I'm going to show you a video of that just in case um, it's not immediately obvious so here is a video of my son just turning these atoms uh, attached to the carbon on the left with respect to the atoms uh, attached to the carbon on the right here he's just showing them to you he's going to flip them around and then he's going to show you that they actually turn you can rotate around that bond and this happens in real life too if you had this molecule in real life what would be happening uh, a fair amount of the time is that these atoms over here would be rotating with respect to these atoms over here so um, you can do it in this toy and it actually does happen in real life with the real molecules so when you have these carbon carbon single bonds you can actually have the mole the atoms attached to one carbon rotate with respect to the atoms attached to the other carbon now I want to compare that to a uh, simple alkene this is a photo of an alkene uh, molecule it has a carbon carbon double bond the double bonds are shown by these two springs attached to each other so each spring is supposed to be a single bond but there are two so it's a double bond and so this cartoon here is just a different representation of this uh, photographed molecule there's a carbon carbon double bond when you have these types of uh, simple alkene molecules where there is a carbon carbon double bond the atoms that are attached to those carbons are relatively flat compared to the atoms that are attached in the carbon carbon single bond you can see up here the the uh, white atoms the hydrogens at least in this case they're pointing out towards us um, over here the four atoms that are attached these two and these two on the left they're not really pointing toward us they're, they're relatively flat um, and and they're in the same plane as these two carbon atoms and this is also true with the real with the real life molecule if you have a carbon carbon double bond and and these uh, two atoms attached on the right 
right and the two on the left, the, the molecule is itself relatively flat. The other thing to point out, and this might be obvious from this uh, photograph of this little toy model, is that you can't actually rotate around these uh, two bonds. Because there are two bonds attaching them, um, these atoms attached to the carbon atom on the right and these atoms attached to the carbon atom on the left actually can't rotate around. And I'll show you a video of that right now. Here's my son showing you the atom, the molecule with the carbon-carbon double bond and showing you that you can twist but the atoms snack back into place. They don't rotate. Twist and snap back. So after viewing that little video, hopefully you have an appreciation for the fact that um, the atoms that are attached to carbons where there's a double bond between the carbons, they can't actually rotate with respect to the other side of the double bond. They, they're, they're sort of stuck in place. So why are we spending so much time talking about uh, the fact that these molecules up here can rotate their atoms with respect to each other, these down here can't? Um, it, it turns out that that type of behavior, the fact that you cannot rotate around a carbon-carbon double bond, gives you a, a new type of isomer that actually shows up a fair amount in biology and in medicine. So over here I have drawn a uh, condensed structure of a molecule that has an alkene functional group, so here's the carbon-carbon double bond. Um, attached to this carbon here, we can call it carbon number two, is uh, what we could call a methyl group, but you can just think of it as CH3. This carbon also has a hydrogen attached, then there's a double bond between the two carbons, there's another hydrogen attached um, to this carbon, and then there's another CH3, here it is, attached to this carbon as well. So if I showed you this uh, this sort of cartoon, this condensed structure of this molecule, um, it turns out that it's, it's also not immediately clear what type of molecule we are talking about. The reason it's not immediately clear um, is because of this double bond, and I'll show you what I mean uh, right now. So it's possible that you could have the CH3, here's the CH3 that's shown here, single bonded to this carbon, which is this carbon here, and then there's a double bond to the next carbon, and then there's the other CH3. And in this case, both of the CH3s are pointing in the same direction with respect to the double bonded carbons. They're both pointing down in our case. And both of the hydrogens are pointing up. So this hydrogen is pointing up, and this hydrogen is also pointing in the same direction. It's pointing up as far as we're concerned. Um, if you have this type of molecule, this hydrogen and this CH3 cannot rotate because of this double bond. They can't sort of spin around like a propeller. Um, and so if you have this molecule, this molecule is always going to stay in this position unless you do something really drastic and, and basically break this bond and then, and then reform it. But if you, don't, if you don't mess around with this double bond, then these atoms over here and these atoms on the left can't, uh, can't rotate with respect to each other. So if I showed you this condensed molecule, you might say, well, you're talking about this molecule here on the left. But it's also equally possible that you could be talking about the molecule here on the right. It's the same thing, except the CH3s point in opposite directions. Here, one of the CH3s is pointing to the north, and one of the CH3s is pointing to the south. And the same thing is uh, with the hydrogens. So, and this molecule that I'm drawing here on the right cannot turn into this molecule that I'm uh, circling on the left because you cannot rotate around this carbon-carbon double bond. These things can't swivel around like a propeller. And because of that, the molecule on the left is not the same thing as the molecule on the right. So if I just drew the condensed structure that I'm circling above, you don't necessarily know whether I'm talking about this molecule on the left or this molecule on the right. Because of that, they get their own names. And there is a special uh, naming convention. These, this molecule on the left, is an isomer of this one on the right. They are both isomers of each other. If you remember the term isomer from the previous unit, it's a molecule that has the same simple molecular formula but the atoms are attached in different ways. So here they're attached differently because the CH3s point in opposite directions on the molecule on the right and the CH3s point in the same direction on the molecule on the left. The molecule on the on the left, uh, there, there they are highlighting uh, how they're different, the molecule on the left is called a cis isomer. So um, cis basically comes from Latin and it basically means that uh, these 
these things are pointing to in the same direction. They're pointing on the same side. And this molecule over here is called a trans isomer. And trans, basically, if you want to think of like a transatlantic trip where you go across the Atlantic, um, these CH3s are across from each other. You have to sort of go from one end, from one end of the molecule to the other end to reach them. And because of that, this is called a trans isomer. I'm not going to uh, go into the naming conventions, that the IUPAC naming conventions of these particular molecules. All I want you to realize is that when you have a carbon-carbon double bond and you have two different things attached to uh, each of the carbons, then you can have a cis isomer where the, the things that are attached are pointing in the same direction, or you can have a trans isomer where the, uh, the substitution, so you can think of the CH3 and this CH3 as being a substitution. Uh, when the substitutions are pointing in opposite directions, you have a trans isomer. When the substitutions are pointing in the same direction, you have a cis isomer. And just to point out that these actually are different molecules with different behaviors, uh, your book points out that the molecule on the left, it has a melting point of minus 139 degrees Celsius. The molecule on the right, the trans isomer, has a melting point of minus 106 degrees Celsius. So uh, they behave in different ways. They're, they are completely different molecules, even though they look very similar and even though they have the same simple uh, chemical formula. So if you have heard of things like trans fats talked about, what they are telling you, that the trans and trans fats basically means that there is at least one carbon-carbon double bond in the fat molecule, and the things that are attached to those carbon-carbon double bonds are pointing in opposite directions, the things that are not the hydrogens. So usually in fat molecules, if there is a carbon-carbon double bond, there will be hy uh, hydrogens attached. Here's a hydrogen here's a hydrogen. But there will be other things attached to those carbons as well sometimes. You can think of them as substitutions. Here's a CH3 substitution, which is also known as a methyl substitution. Here's another CH3 substitution, which is known as a methyl substitution. When you're talking about trans fats, you're basically saying that whatever is attached to the carbon-carbon double bond in your fat molecule, um, the substitutions are pointing in opposite directions. And they make a completely different type of fat molecule than if you had a cis fat molecule. So that's what trans fat means. Here's a different molecule over here. This is a carbon shown at this corner, or it's implied at this corner. Here's another carbon implied at this other corner. And they're connected by a double bond. So here's the double bond. But in this case, they have this carbon over here on this corner has the same type of atoms attached to the north and to the south. Same thing for uh, this carbon over here that's implied at this corner. It has the same thing attached to the north and to the south. In this case, this particular molecule does not have cis and trans isomers because if you could flip this CH3 and this CH3, they would, they would end up, uh, since they're both the same, you're not really changing anything about them. So the only time you can actually have cis and trans isomers with carbon-carbon double bonds is if there are two different things attached to the carbons. So here's our carbon, one of our carbons in the carbon-carbon double bond. Here's one thing attached. Here's a completely different thing attached um, to this carbon. And the same thing with respect to the carbon on the right. You have to have two different things attached to the carbon on the left. You have to have two different things attached to the carbon on the right. Otherwise, um, flipping these things back and forth isn't going to change uh, who they're next to. So that, that's basically it for the new type of isomer. These, uh, these types of isomers, cis and trans isomers, do show up in biology and medicine a lot. Uh, an example of that is trans fats, where uh, the fat molecules have carbon-carbon double bonds, but some of the substitutions are in the trans position. So that, that's basically how you would say it. As far as what to know about cis and trans isomers, I want you to be able to recognize if I showed you a molecule with a carbon-carbon double bond and different substitutions, I want you to be able to know whether it's in the cis uh, configuration or whether it's the cis isomer or whether it's in the trans configuration or uh, another way of saying it is whether it's the trans isomer. So trans means the substitutions point in opposite directions. Cis means the substitutions point in the same direction. The other thing I want you to be able to do is be able to recognize the situations where a molecule uh, can't have a cis or trans isomer. That is 
uh, like the situation that I was showing here. This thing doesn't have cis and trans isomers because everything that is attached to the carbon-carbon double bonds is the same. So no matter uh, how you flip them, um, they're always pointing uh, to the same thing. The, there are, there, there's no difference if you flip this thing and this thing because they're identical to each other. So that's what I want you to know uh, as far as cis and trans is concerned. I want to point out one more thing, um, just in case it wasn't clear. It doesn't have to just be CH3s that are attached to these carbon-carbon double bonds to give you cis and trans isomers. As long as you have some kind of substitution where there end up being two different things on this carbon and two different things attached to this carbon, then you can have cis and trans isomers. Over here, I'm just showing you that the substitutions in this case are chlorines. So they're chloro substitutions on these carbon-carbon double bonds. Here, this thing, because the chlorines are both pointing in the same direction, this is a cis isomer. And over here, almost the same molecule, except the chlorines are pointing in opposite directions, so this is a trans isomer. So it doesn't really matter what the substitution is. It could be chlorine, it could be fluorine, it could be methyl, it could be ethyl. Um, if they're pointing in the same direction, then it's cis. If they're pointing in the opposite direction, then it's trans.